Well, good morning, everyone. Hounder 58 here. It's Saturday, March 5th, and I'm in Neal Gap, Georgia. I got in here yesterday about 3.30, I believe, and uh, I decided to take a zero here. And right now, I'm in the Blood Mountain cabins. I'm in Bear Cabin. It's about a, maybe a quarter mile or less through the woods from the uh, Mountain Crossing Center there at Neal Gap. Um, nice, beautiful cabins. They're $60 a night if you are first come, first serve, if you arrive here, plus tax. And they sleep four, they have a fireplace, they, they're, they're fully equipped. I mean, you don't need anything but food. Stayed last night, and I'm staying tonight. So, kind of a recap of the last uh, three or four days. <clears throat> I left out of Stover uh, about uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. And the weather forecast for the day was going to be partly cloudy but no rain and it was supposed to get into the um, low 30s high 20s that night that would have been Wednesday night so um, I hiked about 10 miles to Cooper Gap and it was a good thing I got there I was getting a little bit low on water and if there wasn't water there I would have had to push on through to find a water source and it would have been very difficult I got I got there about um, 4 30 5 o'clock I was taking my time slowing down a little bit um, and Thankfully, there's a great big uh, military, what they call a water buffalo there. And uh, there was uh, um, several hikers already camping there. It was getting cold, so I filled up my water bottles. I drank as much water as I could hold, and I decided to set up camp there. There's a, some very nice campsites there. Um, that's an area where the Army Rangers uh, have their mountain school. So. All through the night, you could hear Apache helicopters and trucks going up and down the road and people talking. And I didn't get a whole lot of sleep, but I got more than I did at Stover. And it, it was a dry night. My tent dried out. So the next morning, I left from Cooper um, again about 9 o'clock. And my goal was to get to uh, Gooch Gap, a Gooch Gap shelter, and uh, take a break and see, uh, get more water and see, see where I was at as far as the day and how I felt. So about 11.30, quarter to 12, I get to Gooch Gap, and there's about six or eight hikers there. And we got to talking, and one of them had mentioned that he had gotten a, a, a weather forecast earlier in the day that it was going to snow badly um, at uh, around um, 1. So I decided that I was going to try to push on as far as I could go to get to um, Woody Gap. Well, sure enough, about 1 o'clock, it started to snow. It was a light snow at first. And thankfully, it wasn't a winter mix. There was no rain. It was a good dry snow. And it, sno it snowed, and it snowed, and it snowed to the point where you could barely see the, the trail. So I pushed it as far as I could, which was Woody Gap. And when I got to Woody Gap, you could barely see. It was snowing so bad. As I'm coming down in the parking lot, uh, I see what looks like you know, an RV, a giant RV. And it was. It was an RV bus. And there's a big sign on the bus that said, Hikers Welcome. And I could see a uh, big tarp set up, uh, you know, alongside the bus. And all of a sudden, I started to smell this wonderful smell, which was soup, I found out later. I, I got up under the tarp, and there was a group there, the 12 Tribes Missions. And they had set up uh, just to serve and take care of uh, hikers in the storm. Um, they offered us hot tea. They offered us soup, all we could have. All we wanted offered us uh, bread and granola bars they uh, allowed us to store our gear uh, you know under a dry tarp and they invite us inside the bus even uh, to warm up as a huge bus there's probably 20 of us in there sitting just as close as together as we could uh, huddling trying to stay warm so um, thankfully I had service there and I was able to call Wolf Pen Hostel and I got through, and they had. They said they had only had one bed left, and I, I said I'll take it. So I, I reserved it. They and they came and picked me up in a jeep. Uh, the owner went up there. It's a gas station that's been converted into a hostel. Uh, Twenty dollars a night includes a hot shower. And as soon as I walked in, I took off my gear. The owner's, I guess, his partner. Uh, he uh, hooked me up with some really nice fresh potato, and cheddar, and bacon soup. And then you go upstairs to the. Um, the actual hostel, which is above the gas station, 
Uh, oh, I might add, in the gas station area, uh, it's, a, it's a very large building. There's a complete, uh, like a dining area with tables. There's a TV, there's couches. It's very, very nice, and they do have a, a, a good resupply. So I go upstairs to the hostel and say hi to everyone, and uh, there's only one shower, but there's plenty of hot water. I got a bunk, and actually, um, it holds about, I think, 26 um, people, 26 bunks, but only 13 people showed up. So I guess the people that had said they were coming didn't come. So there was plenty of room. Uh, I got a hot shower. I uh, picked a, a bunk. I got all my gear laid out. I started drying it off. They have boot dryers there. Um, went down and had a pizza and, and uh, some uh, water. And uh, I ended up going to bed about I know, 10 o'clock. I was talking to other hikers. So I got up about um, 8 o'clock and got all my gear together. I uh, caught a ride. They have a free shuttle if you're staying there. It's, um, but he wasn't in yet, so this local guy was standing down in the lobby, and I said, I need to get back to Woody Gap. He goes, oh, I'll take you. You know, it's a wonderful community out there. So I hopped in his Jeep, and he took me back to the Gap, and the snow had started to melt. It was supposed to be nicer, um, uh, you know, that day. This was the start of day four. I got back to Woody Gap and got some more soup and some more um, tea from those fine folks down there and I uh, said my farewells and I thanked them uh, graciously. So then I started up the uh, approach trail, I guess, to Blood Mountain. There was a lot of snow on the ground. It wasn't snowing, but there was quite a bit of snow. It had started to melt, and as I went up, it got more sloshy. And there was areas there that the sun hadn't hit, and it was still about four inches deep. So, um, But I wasn't as cold. Uh, the winds weren't that bad. As I climbed up uh, Blood Mountain, um, it really started to clear up. There was still quite a bit of ice on the ground, and um, you know, it, looking back, Blood Mountain uh, going up is is um, it's not that hard. It's it's got a lot of switchbacks, and there isn't a lot of flat areas. Um, there are a couple. I just took my time. I'd walk, you know, maybe a hundred yards. I'd stop. I'd take a, a deep breath. I'd stretch. I would adjust a little bit on my pack. I drink some water and then I start back up. I started to climb up about nine o'clock, and I got there about uh, quarter after one, so it was roughly about four hours to get up there. And again, I'm taking my time. Um, I'm trying to slow down a little bit. You know, I'm only into my fourth day uh, at this point, um, and then I get to the top, and uh, you know, it's just fabulous. It cleared up. Um, you could see uh, just forever. So I climbed up on the famous rock behind the, um, the oldest shelter on the AT, and that's um, Blood Mountain Shelter. And I took some pictures and I just sat there for, I don't know how long, I didn't keep track. I could have sat there all day, but um, somewhere along the line, I knew I had to get up and you know get down the Neil Gap. So this is where it got interesting because when you're going down Blood Mountain, you need to be uh, extremely careful. Now they say that 20% of hikers quit at Neil Gap, and I don't know if it's because of injuries coming down off Blood Mountain. Or it's, is it because they um, just, it was too much for them? I don't know. So it was a very deliberate um, hike for me, and I took my time. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, day four of my uh, through hike. Just coming down off of uh, Blood Mountain. Oh, what a climb. I'll tell you what, going down is worse than going up. Uh, I recommend uh, trekking poles, knee braces, and ankle braces. Uh, it's rocks all the way down, very slippery. And because uh, right now we have a lot of melting snow. So, you know, word to the wise make sure every step's deliberate. Uh, I'll be getting into uh, Neil's Gap soon, and uh, I'll get you going an update, bring you all up to speed uh, for the last three days. So I'll check back in with you in a little while. I'm doing great, making great time. Everything feels like it's working. 
and I'm having the time of my life. I, I'm a little winded, even coming down, very difficult. One guy, young fellow in front of me, he slipped, rolled his ankle, he may be done. So, just if you uh, can keep that in mind, if you're gonna do the AT through hike, to be very, very careful. I got down into Neil Gap about three o'clock, 3.15, and uh, I hung out there for a while, ran into a few of the hikers that I had um, met along the way. Uh, they were all scrambling, trying to find campsites and hostels, and you know, I already had a reservation at the Blood Mountain um, cabin that I had made up, up on the hill. Uh, you know, I, I was able to get some service uh, about 10.30 on a ridge up there, so I came to my cabin, I took all my gear off, and then I walked back about a quarter mile to um, Mountain Crossings, and I bought some food uh, and something to drink, and came back and just got a hot shower relaxed and I was talking to the owner and they do your laundry for you here free if you're if you're a guest so he's gonna take care of my laundry today I'm gonna go back over to uh, mountain crossings and I'm gonna just sit there I've got a huge deck and it's supposed to be nice today the sun's supposed to be out and I'm gonna sit there and just relax and go over my notes and see uh, where I'm gonna go uh, tomorrow tomorrow I'm gonna try to push a little harder I'm gonna kind of plan out my the rest of my week um, Tuesday will be a week on the trail, um, and I, I, I'm heading into some areas that I know because they were part of my pre-hike, so I'm familiar with them, and I know where all the good campsites are if I decide to do that. And I slept um, about eight hours straight through. I woke up at six this morning and had some breakfast, and I'm um, going to get my laundry together, and I'm going to go relax some. And, uh, you know, I'm anxious to get back out there right now, but I'm going to... I'm going to take the time to rest and check my body. So far, no blisters. I do have, uh, I did have some some sore spots on my shoulders, and I was reading my reviews, and a, a couple of guys out there said that, hey, your uh, load lifters are are not adjusted right. Other than that, I'm doing great. Everything's drying out, and I'm 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 ready to go. I'm ready to to hit this, hit it hard. Um, gonna try to pick up my pace to around, um, I don't know maybe 12 to 14 miles. If you see anything that I need to do that's different that will help me, by all means, a comment, because eventually I will get the comments and I will post these videos as soon as I can. So I'll check back with you all later um, for the next part of this journey, this adventure. Have a great day.